Vance took aim at a key element of Walls' biography, his military record. Yeah, Walls served 24 years in the Army National Guard, but Vance accused Walls of abandoning his unit just as they were about to go to Iraq, where Vance himself was deployed as a Marine. Walls retired from the military to run for Congress months before his unit was informed they were going to be deployed. But Vance claims Walls ran from the fight, Walls responding by thanking Vance for his service in the Marines. Scripps News anchor Alex Liaco joins us now to fact check claims from both campaigns. Alexa, what you find? Well, we wanted to dig past the headlines here and fact check the statements made on both sides of the aisle. First off, here's what we know about Tim Walls' military service. This all began with a comment he made about gun control. He said, quote, we can make sure those weapons of war that I carried in war are only carried in war, end quote. So here's what we know about his service. He was deployed to Italy in 2003 in response to the 9-11 terror attack. He was not in an active combat zone, but in his time in the National Guard, he held positions including gunnery sergeant and chief of the firing battery until he became the battalion sergeant major. But it's also his retirement from the Guard that's stirring up attacks from Republicans. Here's what J.D. Vance said about his service. He said we shouldn't allow weapons that I used in war to be on America's streets. Well, I wonder, Tim Waltz, when were you ever in war? When was this, what was this weapon that you carried into war given that you abandoned your unit right before they went to Iraq and he has not spent a day in a combat zone? What bothers me about Tim Waltz is the stolen valor garbage. Do not pretend to be something that you're not. The Harris Walls campaign responded, saying in part, quote, his 24 years of service, Waltz carried, fired, and trained others to use weapons of war innumerable times. Governor Walls would never insult or undermine any American service to this country. In fact, he thanks Senator Vance for putting his life on the line for our country, end quote. And to be clear, Walls did not break any laws or rules by leaving the military when and how he did. He filed paperwork to run for office in February of 2005 and retired two months before his unit received a letter to be deployed to Iraq in July of 2005 in order to run for office. According to the National Guard, after more than 20 years of service, a person can retire at any point regardless of being under contract. Officials say reti retirement requests can be denied if a Guard unit is mobilized, though the ultimate decision is up to the unit commander. Now let's fact check a comment that Tim Walls made about J.D. Vance. Here's what he had to say about being ready to debate Vance in the months to come. And I got to tell you, I can't wait to debate the guy. That is, is if, you, if he's willing to get off the couch and show up. So, you see what I did there? Walls's comment is bringing up a false claim about J.D. Vance. Here's the story behind it. The rumor began after a post on social media went viral claiming that Vance's 2016 memoir, Hillbilly Elegy, included a passage about Vance doing inappropriate acts, quote, inside with a inside-out latex glo glove shoved between two couch cushions. That is not a portion of Vance's book mentioned at all, and it's a claim he denies. The post included a citation with page numbers, though, leading many to believe that it was an authentic anecdote. The false claims, though, on both sides are something that could hurt each campaign's relationship with voters. A Wall Street Journal op-ed cautioned that Trump and Vance could lose this election because of the volume of false claims being made from their campaign. The op-ed reading, quote, his rally speeches are a bundle of personal grievances and impuls impulsive floundering that drown out any consistent message against Vice President Harris. This is still Mr. Trump's election to lose, but as we learned in 2020, he's more than capable of doing it, end quote. The op-ed referring to comments Donald Trump has come under fire for recently, making false claims about Kamala Harris, saying she, quote, doesn't like Jewish people when her husband is in fact Jewish. And in the next hour, we'll dive deeper into the two campaigns and fact check some things that the presidential candidates have said. Guys.